Excellent. And I don't think I've said his name on air. So I just want to give a big shout out to Zach Pencil, who designed our um, our logo. So I know I mentioned him or I linked to him early on, but uh, thank you, Zach, if you're out there. And I see our guest in the green room. So let me just pop up our banner and just in case any of you tuning in didn't know, we're about to talk with Superman himself. So let's bring him in. Hello, George. Yep. How you doing? Hi, Good. George. Good. Good. See ya. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Is the, is the connection okay? Yeah, yes. I, I can hear you well. Okay, good. I'm I'm going to turn your mic up a little bit, but otherwise your connection is just fine. There's no feedback okay. or anything. Okay, good. All right. Uh, so how are you doing tonight? I'm doing fine. Where, where are you guys located? I'm in Ohio. I'm, <laughs> I'm talking okay. over you. I am in Wisconsin. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm in the birthplace of Superman. Oh, nice. Well, it's a little south of it because it's in Cleveland, but... South. Okay. Close That's enough. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> what about you, George? Are you out in California? Yeah, I'm out in Los, Los Angeles. Yep, yeah. yep. I'm in, I'm in my uh, little booth here, my little recording booth, and um, uh, yeah, just doing a little bit of work and joining you guys for a little, little snack here. Excellent. So, are you um, doing like work, recording work for a show? Yeah. Yeah, uh, no, actually, it's it's a um, I'm, I'm narrating a book right now, so just trying Ooh. to yeah, it's uh, I, I do a, I do a lot of that, um, especially during the pan since the pandemic, it's been pretty busy. So uh, waiting for other stuff to sort of get going, it's been good good to stay busy, you know. Yeah. All right. Well, um, first things first. Just want to say hi to the Geek of Steel, Luke. He's in England and he's very excited. <laughs> Oh, hey, hey there, Luke. What's up? <laughs> and then we have our first fan question before Tyler and I get into our questions. Uh -huh. Kristen would like to know what it was like to work with Christopher Reeve and switching channels. So kind of uh, Superman versus really, Superman. Yeah, it was really neat. Um, I, uh, I I did a I did this movie um, when I first came to L.A. And um I, Superman, the movie, the live action movie had just sort of, well, not just, but several years before. And uh, I was a huge fan of his. And when I got this part in this movie, it was a big deal with Kathleen Turner and Burt Reynolds. And it was going to be Michael Caine, but then he couldn't do it. And then Burt Reynolds and blah, blah, blah. But that was, Burt Reynolds was a huge movie star at the time. So it was really fun. But, um, but Chris Reeve, all my stuff was with Chris Reeve. And so I spent two months, um, you know, hanging out in, in Toronto and Chicago and you know, going out to dinner and, you know, hanging out and yeah, it was just, uh, it was uh, surreal and, and really, really fun. But I didn't, you know, at the time, I, if you told me that I was going to voice Superman, you know, that many years later, <laughs> I would have said, what? So it's it was neat. like foreshadowing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That is uh, pretty incredible. So yeah. how did you get the role of Superman in the Justice League animated series? Can you talk a little about that well, process? I, I, uh, I, um, I, I, you know, it's just an audition, like any other audition. Um, it could have been, um, um, just, it was just what was up that day. And, and usually you go to these auditions and you don't, you don't count on getting any of them. So I didn't, I didn't put much stock into it. I just went and did my thing and walked out the door and then, uh, you know, got a call later that I'd gotten it. And so I was like, well, okay, cool. But I didn't really, um, understand. I, I'd known Tim Daly. I didn't even know I was replacing Tim Daly. I, I was a little, I was a little clueless as to what, what this was all about. Um, because I, I, again, I, I, the less I invest in these meetings, the better my mental health, because I just don't know the outcome. So, um, I, uh, I didn't know much about it. I didn't know. I just know, oh, this is animated. This the, the part of Superman for an, I thought it was a one-off, you know, mm. I, I, 17 years later, I'm still, you know, doing movies and games and conventions and still <laughs> I'm talking to people. It's, it's, it's just nuts. It's absolutely the longest sort of ongoing, um, you know, job I've had. And, um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, and, and as, as oddly enough, I'd done a TV movie with Tim Daly, um, about four or five years prior to that. And then I bumped into him on the set of private practice. 
I don't know, six, seven years after that. And I said, Hey man, I'm so glad you weren't available. And he said, God, <laughs> yeah, I know. My God, I didn't know it was going to keep going. So uh, <laughs> it's funny. It's funny. I have, I've, you know, I kind of known all this, the, my previous Supermans, you know, live action. That is and, cool. And other, yeah. So. And I'm just going to show your Superman resume on screen. Yeah. Tyler made this graphic for us. Oh, cool. <laughs> it's impressive. That's fun. That's really, really fun. It, yeah. It's just, it's interesting just how many versions of the character you've got to play. And yeah. You know, yeah. going through this study, um, Kelly and I did a panel earlier. We talked about the <coughs> different voice actors of right. Superman. And we talked um, just about like looking at your resume. You, I think you've done it more than anybody <coughs> in various projects. I see. I think I have. I think I have. Um, just, I've just sort of been last, you know, sort of longest guy standing, you know, um, uh, in yeah, different video games and, 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 um, and then went off movies and then the series and then Justice League Unlimited. Uh, uh, um, and then the convention, it's weird. And the whole convention thing has been a whole uh, another whole other life. Um, but, you know, for the pandemic, it was just starting to really get revved up. And I'm, I guess it's going to come back here again soon. But it's, ama it's amazing. It's, it's a whole other um, um, extension of not just me, but um, the other characters and all the other animated things that, pe you know, get to meet fans and, and whatnot. It's really, it's really been cool and fun to travel all these different places and, and meet people. You know. We have a, a third <clears throat> question here that uh, we're yeah. going to kind of spin off of. Oops, here we go. It's, you know, it says, how was voicing Superman on the Batman different from Justice League Unlimited? And no with that, uh, with <laughs> really? that in mind, I feel like other than Injustice Superman, yeah. Did you, did you kind of feel like you were voicing the same version of Superman or were you adapting anything differently per project? Um, Not really. Not really. The only, the only difference in, in, in some of these uh, jobs has been um, style, I guess. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it's oh, been style and, and, the, and it is, you know, video game stuff is a little different. Um, and the, the one-off movies, it's a little more, um, you take your time and you um, sort of land things a little differently. It's sort of a en different energy level. The games are just different than all of it. You know, it's much more hyped up and, and little bite-sized bits of energy. And, uh, you know, the longer, more narrative forms are a little more relaxed and, um, uh, I don't know, more realistic, if that, if that sounds right. Mm. Makes sense. And yeah. um, this actually spins into a question on our list, uh, our personal list, is obviously Injustice was such a darker, a much darker take on the character. Yeah. So um, how did you approach this darker characterization? And was it kind of a fun challenge? Yeah, it always is. I mean, I've spent my career um, uh, doing either really good guys or really bad guys. Um, <laughs> I, it's really, it's it's really funny. I mean, this sort of late, like late, late in my, sorry, I shouldn't say late in my career, but this latter part of my career, I, you know, I get to play an assassin for seven years on this series on ABC. Ooh. I mean, he couldn't have been a worse guy. I mean, he's like dismembered <laughs> people, you know. Uh, and then, you know, played ultimate good guys, this like Superman and Father the Bride and uh, 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 other things like that. But so um, do, doing the uh, sort of the injustice, injusticeness of it all, I, I guess it's it's fun to sort of kind of have a for actors to get to play a little a uh, little darker note. You know, it's it's a little more interesting in, in some respects because uh, we're, we're not all one thing. Anyway, it would mm -hmm. make us all really boring, you know. I just saw, I just, this is sort of off the subject. I just saw this um, thing on Netflix uh, by Bo Burnham, you know, the, the um, uh, YouTube guy called Inside. Did you, I don't know if you guys yep, happen to see that. It's in my queue. It's in my queue. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh my God, I just saw it today and I was so blown away by this, this guy who I thought was this one thing, speaking of, you know, sort of different aspects of somebody's like, wow, this guy is a fully complicated uh, uh, individual. And, and I think that's, to, to be able to show yourself as an actor, in, in those ways is what you want to try to do. I don't know that I necessarily did it with Superman, honestly, but, but, uh, <laughs> but, 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 but just that's the impulse of most actors to, to get to, to explore those other parts of them, you know, parts of them. So, so. I agree. So just want to show Luke showing his appreciation for how big a part of the Superman mythology you are. Oh, and thank you. I I think he speaks a, for all of us. It's like, been, mm. been an honor, I tell you. It's been an honor and a pleasure because I, uh, 
uh, very rarely do you get to do things that you you uh, see get to connect with folks and have them sort of tell you how much you know uh, your voicing meant to them as a kid and as they as they've grown up and especially with Netflix and and, and these sort of binging availability of folks have been new fans you know that have come up you know who, who had discovered it as an adult and continue on that um, I've met so it's it's really been an honor especially with an iconic you know an iconic character like that it's, it's all the whole world who knows the Superman franchise from the 1930s till now you know depending on how old somebody is it's you know I just got lucky to fill his shoes for this limited amount of time which has just been a gas you know I I mean so my wife and I were preparing uh, notes and stuff and we were talking about because we watch all the different stuff with our kids yeah and, and you know earlier today we got to talk with Jason J Lewis who had done Superman for Justice League action ah uh. and we were talking about like our favorite voice of superman i was like yeah. you know i think everyone comes down to george and tim oh <laughs> and, and my wife was like well which one do you prefer and i paused and i thought about it and i said you know i'm gonna say george oh, and, I, kind of and i said he does he delivered some of my favorite lines as superman and just like to highlight a oh, couple of points you. oh you were very welcome um and I, I say this with all sincerity um just like you know, revisiting some of the stuff like uh, your performance in um, for the man who has everything. Right, I love that. I love um, that episode. Oh, so good. That you episode. know, great and now great writing. as a as a parent, you know, my my son is six and my daughter is four. Mm -hmm. Watching that episode now is even more emotional. Yeah, and yeah. you know your delivery in that, um, and then of course one of the best Superman speeches of all time is in justice league unlimited destroyer where, you know, you're talking with dark side and you say, you know, right. like walking through the world, like a world right. of cardboard the, and really cardboard. Yeah, exactly. He wants to finally break. Oh, break through and, and that is one of my favorites yeah. too. <laughs> right. And That's the, right. You know, I, I will say, you know, just to your point about Tim Daly, because I think the, I think the writing is different. The writing was <laughs> different. You know, it was, I, I agree. Company. And, and he and Tim's great, and Tim brought. I think that what he did for that was great too. It was it was a little more sort of um, a little more. Um, uh, I don't know how to describe it. Um, I think my my writing and and my I guess who I am as a person is a little more um, uh, uh, idealistic maybe, and mm -hmm. a little more um, serious and idealistic. I guess is as uh, a little yeah. more black and white, and I think Tim was yeah. a little more. Of wise a little to the you know wisecracking a little bit to the side and and uh funny or maybe a little funnier but i just don't think the writing was as the same it was just a different take different no more and serious take. i'll i'll use that to say like the other one that i pointed out was uh when you're when you're portraying clark kent talking to billy badson and talking in the uh superman black adam or superman shazam the return of black adam when uh -huh. talking about being good you know, right. and you talk and you're, you're, uh, he's like, it's hard, you know, it's difficult. And he's like, yes, being good is hard. And then later as Superman, you're talking to Shazam and you're like, do what's right, be good. And I'm like, that right. is right. You, back to what you said about the writing for right. your voice. It was just, it resonates. Well, and thank you. Thank yeah. That's, I mean, I, I think that sort of sums up, uh, um, Superman's character, especially, is you know so typically DC, which is the sort of, and uh, not, not Batman so much, but but you know the difference in Marvel and DC uh, is sort of the perfect example of Superman. He, there's there's not as much, um, it's pretty much, you know, black and white in many respects. You know, there's less uh, 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 gray ambivalence about sort of the way the the moral universe works, which is good. You need that and. You know that's what holds that's what holds that 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 world together. I think uh, Marvel's just another thing, you know, um, mm -hmm. but uh, which I love and I think it's funny. Uh, but uh, which, yes, I think Superman's writing and, and with the stuff I got to do uh, really plays to that who he is that that part of Superman, you know. And that goes to Luke's question here: what of what does Superman mean to you? So, <clears throat> um, uh, I think. Um, uh, what does Superman mean to me? Um, I think that, you know, throughout history and culture and, and art and, and whatnot, we, we have, um, uh, the Greek, the sort of the Greek idea of, of, 
of gods and supernatural powers and then you know dovetailing and then into the into the christian tradition of god and the monotheistic religions of the world i think that that you know you think of of, of, of just to say of a christ figure in the sense that superman is a all man and all god in many respects godlike and but they're not really say but I, you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so to yeah. me to me i think it's it's a it's an important character without without being religious without being in in someone's faith it is it is a man who tries to who has superhuman and supernatural abilities and, and powers and also is tries to be fully human at the same time to me that is kind of what we all aspire to you know we are we are our flawed selves we are we are the people that are try to get it right and always fall short and at the same time here's a character who appeals to your better nature and says let's okay get back up again and, and keep keep trying to make and making yourself better and making making it better for others um you know, no matter how hard it is, you know, Superman gets the crap beaten out of him a lot. As a matter of fact, I got, <laughs> I got electrocuted way, way too much for my, uh, for my, my uh, comfort. Uh, and, and just, but, uh, uh, so I, were they uh, actually electrocuting you in the studio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, realistic sounds electrodes to my, to my heels uh, and it really hurt. No, but uh, <laughs> they I were just, very much about reality. Like they wanted yeah. real emotion. I mean, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so that's so, how so, it, so what it voice meant to acting me, works. Uh, I, you, what, what'd you say? That's how voice acting works, right? Exactly. It's like it's like a shock and reward, you know, like the you know, the, the rats in the in the experiment. But anyway, that's what it means to me. Just that I relate to it in, in that sort of dualistic way that Superman has written, you know. Uh, Luke says a perfect answer. Thank you so much, sir. I I agree. So um, before we do any more comment questions. I have my own question. So how did you prepare for the role of Superman? Did you read any comics or watch anything? <clears throat> no, I didn't. I didn't really prepare uh, uh, too intensely other than the fact that, um, you know, uh, I was familiar with comic books. I, I'd read a lot of a fair amount of comic books when I was a kid, but I wasn't really a, a big uh, Superman comic book guy for what well, I didn't really follow us. It's more like into um, Mad Magazine and and Cracked Magazine and like um, I loved Archie and Richie Rich and that, for whatever reason that was just my years of at camp you know I would just read comic books but uh, uh, I think that um, in terms of, of of preparation I the only person I can think of was my big brother who was an Eagle Scout uh, he's a he's an orthopedic surgeon he's four years older than me and. He was just sort of the the you know the leader of our family, and he was like always kind of kind of had a better way to tie a knot and a better way to sort of think about packing <laughs> the car and you know. And so I, I looked up to him, and and I just thought, well, how would my brother Gordon kind of talk to these people? You know, he had Superman had all these long speeches where he was speechifying about a lot of stuff. So I just tried to get in that Boy Scout frame, you know, a lot of the time. So That's that was cool. that was that was the extent of my preparation, really. I mean, Superman is the big blue boy scout. That's yeah, the, very, the, yeah, he really is. Yeah. Very accurate. No, so, I have a question. Um, oh, we'll go ahead and you can answer Kristen's okay. here real quick. Yeah, I know Jason Marston really well. We, uh, Jason did a lot of the uh, early Justice Leagues with us. Um, he was Snapper Carr, the reporter Snapper Carr. <laughs> and um, so I know Jason. He's a great guy. And uh, yeah, I think he lives in. Nashville now or something. He moved to Tennessee or something. But uh, yeah, yeah, we met. We we worked together. I, I know Jason. I'm also so. going to show this little <laughs> Texas <laughs> Metropolis must yeah. be right. Though. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, also, I think every Metropolis taxes are bad, right? Insurance, insurance rates. Of course. Like no, you can't live there. It's too close to the yeah. Daily Planet. Oh, no, the liability alone <laughs> is prohibitive. Yeah, okay, Tyler, go ahead with your question. No, honestly, this one kind of stems from conversations with my son <laughs> earlier. Um, do you think we have hope for an Injustice 3? Mm, I don't know, man. I would love it. I sure would love it. I don't know. Warner Brothers, uh, Warner Brothers sort of has a really um, uh, sort of, I think, a very disciplined sort of track of what they're doing. And I don't know. I haven't heard I haven't heard much in that in that way. Um so I don't know. I would. It'd be great, you know, if there was some sort of crazy fan, you know, wave of, uh, you know, enthusiasm. Maybe they would do something. I think there's. They've been talking about it for a long time, and and uh, I know that uh, Bruce Tim and, uh, yeah, well, Bruce Tim specifically would would. He's said to me he would absolutely do something if if Warner Brothers puts puts their shoulder behind it. But 
you know, you have to wait for the, you have to wait for yeah. the studio. So we just love playing that, and he'll always be like, "Well, in number three, they should have this character, Daddy, and this character, and when's yeah. that one coming?" And I'm like, "Buddy, I, I, I don't know." <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I thought I'd throw that out there. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm down. I was just happy with number two because Black Canary had. That's my that's my favorite yeah. character. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And she had a great storyline. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, very, I very happy. Pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, T Hawkins, Trevor wants to know what's has been your favorite live action role. You've had a lot My of great live ones. Action role. Wow. Um, uh, I've had so many fun, uh, fun and amazing ones. Um, I think, um, I think the last one I did was maybe one of my favorites was Scandal on ABC with, uh, uh, for, for seven years. That was one of the best characters I've gotten to play, which is a kind of a bad guy, which, which he got to be bad and funny and get the girl at the end. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's tough. To, yeah. It's tough to beat that. It's tough to beat that. Um, but I've had a lot of really, really fun ones, you know, really, really that, fun ones. That brings um, me to my question. Yeah. I think I did the math correct, but so it'd be about 1998. What was it like being on the set of friends? You know, it just seems like it was a blast. I, I, I was friends with Dave. I went to college with Dave Schwimmer and uh, and uh, also Matt Perry was a, an older friend of mine. And Lisa Kudrow was my teacher at the Groundlings Improv Troupe right before she got it. I was taking wow. class from her. And uh, so I kind of I kind of knew them. And I was supposed to test for David Schwimmer's part, actually. And I chose a different show to do. Stupid. So uh, I think Schwimmer, Schwimmer would have gotten it. Schwimmer would have gotten it anyway. Obviously, he was born to do it. But you know, it's weird as an actor. You're in. You go to these pilot auditions and everybody auditions, and they they test you know four or five people, and they make it. So uh, anyway, so I chose to test for something else, and blah 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 blah. But but uh, so anyway, to get to do that show was a blast. Uh, they asked me to come in and 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 do it. And the writing is just so. When the writing is that funny, it's just a pleasure to do. Otherwise, you feel like you're trying to you know start a car with no gas in the tank. That's usually the case. That's usually the case with sitcoms. They're usually terrible, but that was a great one. Really fun. That was uh the first time like I put like the two pieces together when I was younger of the voice of Superman and like yeah. your live action work. The Yeti. Yeah, yeah, I was, wa yeah, I was yeah, watching. Yeah, right. I was yeah. watching uh, it, and I was like, wait a minute, that I know that voice. That wait, oh my gosh, wait. like yeah, I'm like, wow, it was on Friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's fun, you know. I can't believe it, and I don't think I even have that distinctive voice. But sometimes when I'm on the phone with different whatever people, like a, you know, an airlines representative or uh, whatever, AT and T guy, whatever, I've had people stop with us. They guys say, uh, "Are you the voice of? Super did you do Superman's voice?" <laughs> and I don't have that distinctive voice, honestly. I mean, so and I'm always shocked that people. There are Clearly. some rabid fans who really hear it and 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 go, "Oh my God, you're the." So that always makes me laugh. <laughs> That yeah. is funny. So yeah. Kristen wants to know, what was Dixie Carter like? Uh, Dixie Carter was, a, she was an angel. God, I love her and I miss her. She passed away a couple of years ago and oh. uh, she was, she was an angel. And I, uh, I got to, when I first came to LA, that was my first job in Los Angeles. And uh, I think I was, I got to LA in September and I had an audition two weeks later and the producer was from my hometown in Arkansas. And he was a football coach when I was doing children's theater in Arkansas, long story. But he, they called me in for the audition because his wife, Linda Bloodworth Thomason, wrote it. And I auditioned and I got it. And then when she was the played, you know, played my mother, I was like, oh my God, she reminded me so much of my mother and growing up in Arkansas, very Southern and genteel, you know, because um, I, I grew up in Arkansas. So I knew these people. And uh, it was a, it was a blast, man. It, it was such a blast to be on that show. Uh, oh. I kept in touch with us. St I'm still in touch with Harry Thomas and the producer and uh, Annie Potts and I are, are talking on Facebook together. So, so it's good. It kind of lives on. That's good. And yeah. so of all the Superman story arcs you've been a part of, do you have a favorite, like, do you have a favorite episode from Justice League, Justice League Unlimited? I know this is like choosing a favorite child. No, I, you know, <laughs> I think, I think, um, uh, you know, if, I think, gosh, there are so many. Um, <laughs> uh, it, living in a world cardboard, that speech I got to do was was maybe my favorite speech I got to do. And then I loved for the man who has everything we just spoke about before. I loved um, 
I can't remember the episode because I go to these conventions and so many people know that know the episode names <laughs> way better than I do and what part and what lines I said, which I can't necessarily remember. Um, what is the episode where he, a, a good and evil Superman, uh, Brainiac and myself, uh, whatever that episode was where I got to play evil and it's to, together in the same frame was mm -hmm. uh, so fun, just stupid fun. I mean, Superman, he was sort of crazy. He was just sort of crazy Superman. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember the episode, but, but uh, that, was a, that was a blast. So You know, another um, great, and like we we're talking about like the, the lines that you're, you delivered in the speeches was, yep. you know, that you got to adapt the film version of uh, Whatever Happened to Truth, Justice, and the American Way, which mm -hmm. was Superman versus the Elite. Yeah. And... I'm just, I guess we're talking, I'm sitting here thinking more and more like, man, you did get some really great sure writing for your sure Superman yep. to perform. Yep. And that, that is, uh, it's pretty impressive because I mean, I'm, you know, yeah, so fun. a lot of people have never, like with all the different people we've talked about today who have voiced Superman or the live action, like you have probably the most iconic <laughs> moments for the character. Well, I, I, I sure, uh, you know, I, I do what I'm told. So, <laughs> so I, that's how I do. That's why I got married. I'm just lucky. Yeah. She's probably watching and thinking, oh no, he said that, but yeah, that's what I always say. I got married. So I don't have to make decisions anymore. Oh, oh, and, uh, well, happy wife, happy life. Off, yeah. You're best off not making you Well, you got to figure out a way to, um, just do what she says. And then if you can get your, get your word in edgewise, do it, but do it nicely. Cause otherwise you're going to, be miserable. I've been, married for, I've been married for 31 years. 31 years. Congratulations so. on that. Thank wow. You. That's so. amazing. Congratulations. It is, it, thank you. It's it's uh it's been a good journey and hard journey, but fun, you know. Kind of like one, life. Yeah. Uh one of the questions I wanted to ask is when you were asked, were you asked uh to audition or were you just um they just said, Hey George, can you come do this when you were given or played Steve Trevor? Were you sad that they didn't ask you to do Superman? Like, you know hey, what? we're doing a new I, DC movie. I, Come be you know, Steve it, Trevor. It's weird. It's weird. I, the whole after we finished doing the series and I was doing a couple of games, they would do one-off movies and and they would have a different Superman and you know whatever. And at first, I was like, Andrea, what do you what do you mean it's a different Superman? Well, I, <laughs> I, and then you know, I just got philosophical about it. I went, you know what? It's okay. There's everybody can do a little bit. I got to do my thing, and 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 clearly, it's just I. I get to keep living. I keep, keep keeps going on. Whatever this incarnation of it is now, it's it's fine by me. But uh, at the time, I was a little sort of I was a little a little butt sore for a minute. But <laughs> but, uh, but no, it's fine. I'll do it. That's Steve Trevor. That was fun to do. Yeah. I'm an actor. I'll go do it. So. I mean, Steve Trevor is a pretty awesome character. Like he yeah. gets underrated, yeah. but uh, super fun. Um, so no no regrets. <laughs> All right. Uh, so how does the prep process differ between um, doing live action and voice acting? Well, I think, uh, uh, let's see, it, it's still acting no matter what, and you have to prepare, yes. but um, in voice acting, you have to clearly, um, well, uh, um, well, on camera, there's a lot that's portrayed by what is unsaid. Okay. So you have to know physically preparation, the physicality of the character and, and, and all of that. That's the main difference because on the camera, you're not seen. If you don't, if you, you don't see what's going on, whatever the animator did, they give a look that's on the animator. That's I, I didn't do that. So you, so your voice is, um, you have to, I think make, um, more, pr more precise, and dynamic choices with your voice acting because you have less room to convey what you want. If you're on camera, you can do it vocally and physically. So there's a little, and they can give you do two opposite things, and that's maybe a way of choice. With voc vocally, <clears throat> you know, you, you've got one shot at one thing, and whatever the animator and the writer do to help you, good for them and good for you. But you don't. It's less control, I would say. So preparation is is. Um, not any less uh, thorough. It's just um, you have you have less room for error, so you have to be more surgical in your preparation. I think for for voice work. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. that totally makes sense. I mean that yeah. you know, 
It's That's just... been the, the theme of the weekend. We had a panel with um, yeah. some of my friends who are voice actors, and yeah. you were the third celebrity voice actor on top of my friends. Yeah, it, it's been a voice acting weekend. Um, oh, fun. Yeah. Like you said, voice acting is acting, which I completely agree Oh, yeah, with. for sure. <laughs> which has also been the theme of the weekend <laughs> accidentally. Well, no, I love anybody it. Says People always ask me, say, you know, how, how do I get a voice actor? Especially these conventions. How do I get a voice actor? I want to be a voice actor. I was like, great. Just, but go to an acting class and, and do a play or something because it's it's acting is acting is acting. And if, if you're bad at it, you won't be a good voice actor. You know, so and you can be act, and you can be an actually very good actor, but be a bad voice actor because you don't have a, your a lot of it is, you know, a lot of it is the your instrument. And some people have naturally resonant voices that you can't you just have it or you don't have it. Mm -hmm. But then, and then at a certain, then after that, then you're, you know, you're, you're either a good actor, or a bad actor, but you know, someone like Clancy Brown is a friend of mine um, who plays Lex Luthor. Right. And he, <laughs> he's, his head is huge. His literal cranial cavity is large and his <laughs> voice, he'll say hello. And it's, uh, and it's just naturally resonant. It just vibrates in his skull. So he's going to sound amazing doing anything. Yeah. And he's a great actor on top of it, which makes it even better. Someone like me, who's got a, an average sized cranium and, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, and, and a, <clears throat> I was a singer, so I have facility, but, but I don't have any sort of thing that jumps out and says, wow, I love that scratchy voice that guy has, or wow. He's like, so this is just more work on my end, I think, to, to try to, you know, to do different kinds of characters and voices. It's harder for me because I have to stretch more in other ways. So, you know, what you were saying just a moment ago about um, the choices you make, like physical, I think that would translate back to where you were saying that some actors just don't, aren't good voice actors because they're used to maybe communicate more in the physical realm of, right. of right. I mean, like right now I'm talking with my hands. I do it all the time without thinking about right. it. Uh, but it's very hard for me to like, just sit here um, hands right. down. So, that would make sense to be a great actor, but then it doesn't translate to being a great voice actor. Right, right, and it goes the other way. That's that's true. That is true. Absolutely. So, how did you get into acting? Uh, I was, uh, you know, I was, you know, I, was, I did. Uh, gosh, I started doing children's theater in, in Little Rock, Arkansas, when I was twelve, and um, I just liked it, and it was a really good program where I was, and I started. I don't know. I just kept doing it. And, it, you know, coming from a small town, I, I, a lot of people have small town itis in the sense that they're like, OK, I, I got to do something exceptional. I got to do something that's really different. And, uh, and maybe I was a show off or something. I don't know. Um, I was third third kid of four. Um, but I wanted to do something that was different. And that theater was where it was felt different. Something felt magic and different about it, you know. And uh, I, I as it turns out, <clears throat> I did have ability and it's not always the case, but I did. I was a ballet dancer and a, and a singer for for a long time. That was my first. I did musical theater, so that was all I did until I was in college. And then I started branching out and doing other stuff. So I, I became an actor because, to me, it seemed like kind of a magic place. You know, kind of a different, um, dark world, a dark, quiet box where stuff happened that was so cool and just you know I don't know how to describe it. You know, when you go see it a great play or something <clears throat> is there's something like um silvery in the air there's something like kind of magical about the dark yes. and and the single spotlight on someone that you go oh this is there's something happening here <clears throat> you could i guess you could analyze it and talk about it it's cavemen you know around a fire <laughs> or stories or whatever but but for me being in arkansas and doing theater to me felt different and i didn't i wasn't a regular kid i guess you know who is i'm normal but i wasn't i wanted to do something or try to do something special or different you know you're among the know. freaks and geeks here i don't think any yeah, of us yeah. were regular kids <laughs> yeah i was definitely not a regular kid I, I listen i took ballet and i played the flute and i was in the south and so you know i'm surprised i didn't get my butt kicked on a regular basis i, I didn't but I, but uh but you know what it actually it made me i was proud of it and i i I was good at it. I was good at the things that I did. And if you kind of hang in there and you just own it, you know, people, the people who are quote unquote, uh, whatever, convent, more conventional people in your world respect you when you have a conviction about something that you love to do. So 
if you're convicted and passionate, people people respect that. Unless you're a serial killer, that's all another thing. I mean, yeah, maybe don't follow that passion. Yeah, maybe yeah. don't, please. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, there's some uh, there's some issues there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> clearly. <clears throat> so. Now, is there any projects you have coming up that you can talk about? I know that a lot of times no, actors are uh, like, no. can't talk about it. <laughs> no, you know what? I did something before the pandemic. It was a uh, series called Dirty John, uh, the Betty Broderick st stories. Uh, I played Christian Sl Slater's lawyer. And that came out, you know, a couple months into the pandemic. And after that, that was, that was locked down. There was nothing. So, <clears throat> and then, and then sort of the sort of political changes in the world and, you know, George Floyd and all that stuff. And, We've had just a big change in uh, projects being done and stuff. So, so at least on camera for me, I've, I've just not had that much come. Up, you know, fifty-seven-year-old white guys. It's, <laughs> there's just been less. There, there has just been less by nature of what's going on. And I totally get it. So I've been. Uh, there's been a lot less activity that way, but voiceover stuff has actually. I've, I've stayed pretty busy. So I don't have any projects to talk about <laughs> necessarily yet. Hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. Um, I did. I don't mean that. Don't take that contact that that comment out of context. You know what I'm saying? It just means that. Uh, oh no! My oh, world, no. They, they've We're... been writing for me for 30 years, and now finally other folks. Are yeah. No, I, I, I. I'm not as busy as all I'm saying. Oh, no, George, I, we're I, tabloid I, news. We're going to splash a headline and be like, George Newbern, angry old white man. No. Well, no, that's no. also that's you're. Like Bill Brinkman. Said, I did not mean to call you white. Okay. Er, no, I, I, oh my gosh. I did not mean to call you old. I'll talk now. It's been a long <laughs> weekend. I'm yeah. Okay. Drop me out, America. Tyler. It's been a long weekend. Um, I'm the whitest person in America. Just look at me. So, okay. uh, hey, here's a great question. Me? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> would you like me. to go back to musical theater or acting on the stage again? Uh, I would love to do musical theater um, uh, if it comes up again. Although I, I must say, uh, doing so much i do a lot of book narration and it's 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 exhausting and it kills my 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 vocal cords it it's wears me out so i <clears throat> i've been doing so much over the last six years that um for me to do a musical again i would literally have to stop narration i think for four or five months and and wow. just literally rest and build up again and then i would love to do it but i don't know i don't know if it'll happen maybe that'd be great we had we had a comment earlier and I feel bad for missing this in my research, but it's been a busy time as I'm preparing to move. Um, that you voiced and did the audiobook of Sean O'Connell's book. Where was oh, about the, uh, the uh, uh, is Zack Snyder's? Uh, yeah, yeah, Justice League. Yeah, I did it. It was awesome, really cool, really fun, That's really neat, neat story. I felt horrible because I interviewed Sean earlier. <laughs> like, oh. and somehow <laughs> I, I missed that. Like, here I am. I'm like, oh, I missed two yeah, things was... here. Uh, that, it's been was, a long that was day. cool, uh, but but uh, yeah, no, it was it was an honor to get to do it, and um, I didn't, I I was not aware honestly of all the, you know, the backstage drama that was going on, or the, on the just sort of the movement of of uh, getting that his cut out. You know, that was that was a big deal to get that done. Yeah. That that never happens, never happens. So I mean, I think just I, from a filmmaking point it. of view, I really, I really liked it a lot. It was long, but I loved it. That was cool. From I'm just a film point of view, person. like the Pardon? fact that it, I was saying from just a film point of view, like the idea of like the director's cut process, not even just that's a comic book film, just yeah, yeah. that whole thing is crazy. Uh, I heard someone oh, yeah. say it'll be studied in film school and stuff for years of just of how the process and yeah. the two different versions. and. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, just, I mean, I the, the Sean's book was really, you know, detailed and uh, down to the you know, down to the last bit. And, and, uh, it, 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 it was an exceptional event, regardless of it. You're right. Being a superhero they they just don't, they don't have the time or money to ever go back and they make a decision and that's it. And director's yeah. cuts are you know, usually really long, longer. And, but they, the thing about this was they brought in somebody else that was, had a totally, just, I, that didn't make any sense. Honestly, I don't know why they, why they, they should have had him. Come oh, and finish. Yeah. It, was so, it was so stupid. But it um, was crazy. And better. I felt, I felt for Ray Fisher all throughout that. But then when yeah. that cut was released, I was like, whoa. I was so happy for him that his hard work got yeah, shown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, the actors, they were caught in between, you know, uh -huh. a rock and a hard place at the end of that, too. So, but, would, you, uh, 
Would you ever travel up to Vancouver and appear on one of the CW shows and like a small like cameo or anything? Heck yeah, uh, in three seconds I would. I love working in Vancouver. I've worked there a ton. I love it up there. I do it in three yeah. seconds. I just, Absolutely. you know, one thing I've always appreciated with like, especially like with Superman, like it seems like that character and that world really pays homage to legacy. You, yeah, you yeah. see previous actors come back for parts, uh, especially with the Lois Lane character. You see like the previous Lois come back as the maybe the current Lois's mother, you know, depending on right. the time frame right. and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, would, I wanted to do that. What was it called? Infinite. Uh, uh, infinite. World. Oh, yeah. The crisis on uh, Infinite Earth. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to be in that or do something in that, but it's just, they couldn't, it didn't work out. I don't know. But Oh, man, totally that would have been good. awesome. I know, right? I would have geeked out. <laughs> I mean, I think you, I think you could play a like, um, I think you'd make an awesome Jarrell. Like, you know, if you put you in, that'd be so like, fun, super fun, right? Okay, mm -hmm. everyone, tweet this. Uh, it happened. Well, you can't. It's only about yeah, George Newburn for yeah. Jarrell. Let's let's make that happen. <laughs> G O for that, Jor L. That's right. That'd be amazing. That'd be yeah, amazing. That'd be it would. I mean, I know that you did an episode. I think it was just one episode of Grimm, right? It was just the one. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was one of those like shows. And what's what's funny about that show is like the fact that the actor who plays the Grimm, I always say, man, he'd make a great Batman. I tell my wife all the time, like when that show first started, and then he voiced Batman because I for the longest time I was holding out like he should be Batman on CW. Who was that? Who was that? Uh, David. Um, I can't pronounce his last name. No. Um, David it starts with a G. I'm horrible with name pronunciations unless uh, I hear it. But um, Dave Grimm was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I know who you're talking about. Yep. 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 So, yeah. The the main Grimm. He, uh, the main Grimm. Like be, yeah. <laughs> but. So, George, do you want to talk a little bit about the other audiobooks you've worked on? I have a huge uh, audiobook fan. <laughs> gosh. You know, I've, I've, done, I've done almost 400 audiobooks. Um, <gasps> at this point. And uh, you can go on Audible and check them out. I, I'm, yes. I've done a ton of biographies. I've done, uh, gosh, I just finished a Doctor Doolittle, The Voyages of Doctor Doolittle. Um, I'm doing a book, right? I'm doing a biography now about uh, Doug Tompkins, the guy who, uh, uh, gosh, he he was CEO of uh, of Esprit Company, and he was a big conservationist. He just recently passed away. So, but gosh, I, I there's I did the Go go to Audible, yeah. Check it out. I'm, it's almost 400 books so far, and and uh, I've done a bunch of science fiction. I did all the other world mm. series by Tad, Tad Tad Williams, I think is his name, Tad Williams, and that was bananas. I, I get these books, and those the science fiction ones especially are, uh, you know, I had 150 characters, and in, in one of those books, and I have a big list. I just you know write the characters' names down. And I have to <clears throat> assign a voice to them, and I have to refer and right. remember. Crack who's talking and 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 um, you know what accents I can do, they, and that's the other thing. You know, the I I don't want to appropriate accents, but at the same time, if it says someone's Indian or you know Hispanic, and I'm having to do all the characters, and you're you're in your car listening to this book, or, or in your I, you've got to differentiate them, right? So, you know, right. I just happen to be the narrator, so I don't know. I'm trying to be sensitive. Yeah. It's it's crazy. It's a whole other uh, thing. So. Uh, uh, but, 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 how do you prepare for like the audio book? Because I was sitting here thinking as you were oh, talking, it's like a, it's a complete other animal. It is a complete other animal because you're you're acting, you're directing yourself, you're acting all the characters, you're editing it. As I, I've got Pro Tools up here, I mean, it's just you know, I can I can just show you my session right now if I can. Hold on, get it to come up here. Uh, where is this? Let me hold on. I've got my computer here. So this is you know, swing it around here. That is. That is what I'm working on right now. So that that's the waveform yeah. of the book, right? So, so um, you know, like, it, like wherever I am, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll go here and I'll record. So this will, um, oh, sorry, this is my days. So this will give me three seconds before I'm talking, and now I'm recording new material, right? So it's recording us talking right now. That's happening. <laughs> so, but anyway, so that that's that's what I do, and the, and what I'm act actually talking to you on is my iPad and I swing it over and I've got the text here. So I'm basically got, got one hand on the <laughs> mouse and my left hand scrolling down and I'm reading and watching the waveform. So it's like this, you know, you're doing this, you know, at the same time, patting your head. <laughs> so, uh, so the audiobook world is very different because you have to be sort of a jack of all trades. 
It sounds so like it. it. It's really interesting, and it's and, and it's actually the hardest thing I've ever done. It's way harder than on wow. camera. It's way harder than and than anything else, and it pays the least. So there you go. <laughs> anyway, oh, I'm, but, do uh, you enjoy with any kind of prep yeah, work for an audio book? Well, prep work like is, you're talking about it, it depends, the different characters. Yeah. Well, it depends do you, if you're doing nonfiction. You know, it's your mm -hmm. research is what you know the pronunciations of things, and and you know just be familiar with it. And it's mostly just looking up pronunciations, but. But for fiction, you know, you get a murder mystery or you get a science fiction or whatever. You, you need to know who, who's who's the protagonist, who's the narrator, what third, first, second, third person. What are we doing to paint the paint the story for the for the listener? I mean, this is different than animation. This is just listening. So so you you are you having to speak slower. You're having to, um, you know, paint a picture with your voice in a way that is different than animated voiceover, than commercial voiceover, than on camera. Uh, and I, I don't know, I, it's really hard. And you do, you have to do it. I'm sitting in the studio for six hours a day. And it's, it's not for the, you know, faint of heart. Wow. But, uh, but it's cool. It's cool. It's actually, it's actually really uh, uh, satisfying work, but it's just freaking hard. It's just hard. Cause I get bored. I get, I get I'm like mm -hmm. a, my attention span of a squirrel and I'm like, oh, I want to look at my phone or whatever, but you just have to be engaged. And uh, I, I wouldn't, I shouldn't say I get bored. I'm just saying I can't not focus on it a hundred percent. And it's not my personality. I have to really work yeah. at it. You know, it seems like, you know, you're, you're someone who, you know, I could, when you're with people, you're feeding off their energy and you're exchanging, you know, dialogue. So like the on camera or the voice work, um, cause you're like, you know, hearing about the process that yeah, a lot of those justice league cartoons and stuff are done where it's more of everyone together than right. We're all together individual in sessions to get to hear and see them. And that, yeah, it's a different deal. This is a very solitary job. Very solitary. Do you do the book? Um, do you do it straight through? Like you start chapter one and you read through, or do you go yeah. like maybe per character or no, 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 oh my God, no, that would be so impossibly difficult to do. <laughs> I, I mean, I believe it would be, but I just yeah, no, you start beginning, you know, start at the beginning, go to the end, and and, and you just and Dan Musselman is a is a publisher at Random House. He just said to me, he said, you know what, just tell the story, just tell the story, just start at the beginning, slow down, tell the story, and you know, don't rush to the end, and don't you know, like a horse, to, you know, like a horse to the barn at the end of the book. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes plays, or, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. You got you got to stop. You know, you got to stop. And and then you send it all in. You sit, upload it digitally in the editor or wherever he is. And I have editors in New Zealand and New York and wherever. And they get it and they'll they'll go comb through it with a with their, you know, editing stuff. And they'll say you made whatever, 53 mistakes. And so I'll make a file for mistakes and they'll send me the PDF with the stuff that's highlighted. And I'll go through and, you know, the hardest part is remembering what voices I've done for what, because it's been, you know, maybe two months since the last yeah. time I did that book and i've done two other books or three other books yeah so so it's hard it's fun and it's hard and it's a whole other world it's i mean it's 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 a very you've got rabid audio book list, uh, listeners out there that are very yeah there you go i mean you, you, yeah, you guys are really watching it i get my butt handed to me constantly about mispronunciations like where'd you get that guy he didn't look up that word or he said the word wrong oh no i'm not like that Oh, I good, just good, like good, good. consume them and oh, I good, appreciate good, them, good. but no, I'm not like yeah. that. I just oh, am rabid in that I oh, am gosh. constantly listening. It is so, I mean, <laughs> with it's fiction, so it has to be crazy. Like you ever call it, like, are you able, do you have access to like the author? Like, Hey, how do oh, you yeah, properly yeah, yeah, pronounce yeah. this character? Yeah, yeah. So that, yeah. you know, what you communicate and what I communicate is the same, because I think I remember reading the story, like the Harry Potter, like, um, the the person who did the audiobook for the first Harry yeah. Potter book mispronounced Voldemort's name yeah. of how the author intended it. And then because of the audiobook, it stuck. And that's why everyone <laughs> that's else says it the way that it was on the audiobook. Oh my God. I can't even tell you. I've I've run into that a couple of times. But the good news is I've got a search function on my when I've got the PDF, it's called I annotate, and I'll I'll punch in a word like character's name Stacy. I was like, Oh god, crap, is that person all the way through? How is this? And I'll Stacy comes up 450 times. Boy, I better get that right. I better make sure that I know that she's, you know, Irish or into whatever. And then, but another word, I'll look up the pronunciation. It comes up six times. I think, ah, if I screw it up, I'll just, I can pop it in six times. But 400 times is a problem. <laughs> yeah. You know, to go back and redo it, it's real, that's hard. So you got to make sure you don't get your, you know, get your butt handed to you. Kristen is saying Jim Dale, which, yeah, that was. Oh yeah, with. totally, totally, totally. I've, I mean, I've, Jim Dale's a master genius at that. And, and, uh, I've had to 
I've had to, uh, I've had to do books that had equally amount the number of characters, and it is it is a crazy, <laughs> crazy making uh, time, but it's fun. It's really fun. Yeah, like Jen says, this is super interesting. Like I'm gonna yeah. have a new appreciation as I listen to those. Oh, so thank you. Oh, yeah. Listen, it's easy to be a bad narrator, but it's really hard to be a good or really good one. It just because you just you know, your brain is like, it's like kind of pulsing while you're doing it. Cause you're, you know, you're just trying to listen to it as a symphony. And at the same time, make sure that the, the gardener, when he goes by the noise and in the thing, you know, and I kind of hear it's, it's crazy. It's fun. It's fun. <laughs> it sounds, it sounds like a fun challenge. It sounds like yeah. you don't, you don't shy away from a challenge clearly. No, I don't. I don't. I've been, I like to stay busy too. I, I hate sitting around waiting for somebody to get waiting by the phone. It's not good. This is something I don't wait by the phone for. I, I just, I get to work and I have relationships with publishers in New York and thank God they've been really generous and I've gotten a lot of good work and that's great. I'd stay busy, busy me, happy me, happy life, happy, happy me, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> all in a circle. Well, in this last year, obviously, like we discussed, it's hard to stay busy and stay sane. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, no it's so true. It's so true. You know, they say that, what do they say? If, uh, if creative people don't, aren't creative, they create problems. Yeah. That's kind of the way it is. <laughs> That's it's accurate. True. So yeah, creative people <laughs> need to stay busy at something creative in some respect, or else they will really, you know, they turn, that's why you have so much you know, dysfunction, I think, and with actors, writers, directors who turn in themselves and drink and the, the drugs and the whole thing is just because they, they either have too much outlet or not enough outlet for, for who they are. So. Uh, That's very true. Have you done any more, any other virtual in the drugs? last year? What? Say what? No. <laughs> yeah, any more. Oh my gosh. I am botching Ooh. this interview. I am no, no, so what? sorry, George. I showed no. up as Lois Lane and then really you got sorry. like bargain basement lois lane whatever that is <laughs> no, no, no. okay lane. have you have you done any other virtual conventions in the last year uh, a bunch I, I i did a ton i did a bunch of galaxy con stuff um uh gosh i don't even know i don't know galaxy con i guess is a company and i've just done a bunch of them uh, i don't know if they were specifically for a certain city or not i don't even know I just done a, I've done a ton. I feel like once you start saying yes to one of the bigger conventions, well, they just know, keep asking you. Honestly, honestly, hopefully, I want to go in person because they're just they're better and funner and longer, and you know you get to see more people. Um, but uh, you know, uh, but otherwise, you know, they got the, the virtual ones are nice to at least to keep, keep moving and keep doing stuff. But, so. I completely agree. I I miss in person cons. Like that's uh, why we. That's why we started this was to kind of yeah. take the place and yeah, of course it's good for a while. I don't think it, I don't think it can take its place, but it's good as a sort of, you know, uh, and a bridge situation. Yes. I think. So, but luckily things are starting to get back to yeah. normal. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, Kristen yeah. says, we hope to see you in Metropolis for hugs. <laughs> yes. Yes. Kristen Marie. Absolutely. That's a pretty name. Kristen Marie. And now, um, George, I'm going to bring someone on who his name is Trevor. He is an artist and he's donated three pieces of art to our Actors Fund giveaway. And what he does for a lot of celebrities is he actually paints for them. And so oh, cool. I, if you're all right with that, I'm going to bring him on so he can show sure. off his art and like give you a spiel because he would like to give you some art. Oh, cool. That's lovely. Lovely. So Thank you. welcome, Trevor. Um, down. Hi, Trevor. Hey. Hey, George. How you doing? Where, are you, where doing? are you? I'm in um, Norcross, Georgia. Norcross, Georgia? Uh, basically, okay. basically, like North North Atlanta. Okay, north, nice. East. Got it. But right. um, Cool. I like your hat. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's one of many. But, yeah. Uh, I just want to say thank you for all you do. And Thank all you. you've done with the Superman stuff, and Thank you've you so made much. my life a lot uh -oh. happier. Thank and, you, Trevor. Uh, but when I started going to the Superman celebration, like in 2008, um, yeah. I'm an artist that does pop culture stuff. I call my work yeah. intuitive pop because it's basically like uh, if Monet and Warhol had a car crash and their work collided, that's kind of 
how I feel about it. <laughs> yeah, but um, be great as like, that, actually. <laughs> but as like, well, you can be the judge in a second. But yeah. um, I usually, when I meet celebrities, I just decide to say thank you. I do two paintings, and usually, yeah. used to, I would do one in a an arena that they do well, that they're known for, and then usually yeah. I might dig something obscure. In your case, yeah. I'm strongly tempted to do two Superman, but. But anyway, um, here, here's my, was the one that um, Helen Slater signed for me. Like, she didn't keep this one. This was her. Oh, that's neat. That's neat. Smallville. Um, cool. Diane. Uh-huh. Neat. And Jeff, and Jeff East. Yeah. Nice. And I, got, I, got, I got both of their signatures on different, different right. years. Cool. Cool. Um, this was one of my first. It was uh, Ned Beatty. Oh, Ned Beatty, nice. I've worked with Ned Beatty. Ned Beatty was in Switching Channels with uh, Chris Reeve in that movie. Margot. Nice. Sure. Like this. Very and, nice. Uh, and as far as the voice, this was, uh, I'd given a painting to Tara Strong, and I did this one, uh, kind of did a mashup between. Uh, oh, cool, yeah. Between Love several it. of her voice parts. Cool. So, love it. So anyway, um, I would love to, to send two things on to you through your, you know, sure, channel. So. And uh, if you would autograph one and send it I back, sure that will. would be. Sure will. That'd be great. Thank you. Oh, but, yay. Uh, but thank, thank you, y'all. And again, thank you. And um, um, you're welcome. Yeah. Oh, I was going to well, say, I, like, I, I, uh, do, what Kristen put have, in. I don't know if it went small. Ned Beatty just passed away. Yeah. No. Just just now. Oh, my God. Kristen put it up. Yeah, she put it up a little bit, and I was checking. Yeah, it just, uh, yeah, I I pulled it up, and I was looking, yeah, at 2.58 p.m. today. I'm sorry to hear that. He was a great guy. I really liked him. Wow. Wow, wow. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're not getting out of this alive. That's for damn sure. Jeez. Oof. Well. Um, well. Anyway, if if anything comes to mind, like what, you know, what, what, anything that there's that you would like that you've never had before in the way of fan art or speak now or then do with you. my judgment. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate whatever you do is great. I'm 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 happy. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> and, Thank you very much. Thank you. Nice, nice to meet you. Stay cool there in Georgia. Oh, it's it's ninety three here today. <laughs> boo, oh boo, gosh. Boo, boo, boo. Thank you. We're just getting started. I know. <laughs> oh I know. my goodness. I remember, I grew up in Arkansas. Man, it was hot as hell in Arkansas. Oh my so. goodness. And uh, Trevor, before I drop you out again, thank you again for donating. Like, I really appreciate it. And I'm going to drop you out. Okay. Thanks. Thanks Bye, Trevor. Thank you, buddy. Bye. And um, George, is there anything, since we're at the end of your panel, even though I have been having so much fun with this, is there anything else you would, that we didn't cover that you would like us to know that you'd like to share? Not that I can think of. Um, uh, Oh, I know. I I know. the guy who does my voiceover stuff has a link. Uh, I don't know if you want to put it up. Uh, it's a celeb works. Uh, they want to do autographs or whatever. I think there's a oh, link. Oh, that that's right. Thank you for reminding me. And I think it's either, I don't know how you put it up here. You could put it up there, actually. I don't know how you do it. But if they wanted <laughs> to do autographs and stuff, they can go to that and then they send it to me and I send it back out. So if you want to do that, you can do that. Yes. Let me, so. let me just pull this up and I will do Cut a little. Page. Yeah. Cool. So yeah. I'm going to screen share so people can see it. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Because I know a few people were asking because. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's, uh, well, there's a, I think there's a store, I think, for me. And I, I think, did she send you that link? Yeah, she oh, sent shop. me the direct link. So, yeah, okay. so yeah, we, we did link to the direct link. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I meant to have it pulled up and then I, um, Oh, didn't. It. <laughs> it happens. No worries. Um, no worries. So, 
before we let you go, I want to announce our final total because I know that the Actors Fund is close to your heart too. And that's yeah. one of the reasons you agreed. We sure. made our goal and we Beautiful. raised 1,020 Great. total. Great. So Beautiful. yeah, considering how that's small great. we are, I'm pretty that's proud great. of that. Um, that's really great. So thank that's you awesome. for being here. This has been Beautiful. so thank fun. You, thank you, George. That's we started that's with awesome. Batman. On Friday night with Diedrich Bader yeah. and ended with Superman. Great, great. I know Diedrich. I love Diedrich. So, all right. It, it, will you do the Superman voice before you go? <laughs> okay. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, welcome to StreamYard. <laughs> welcome to StreamYard, everybody. Get to the Watchtower. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> Thank you. I shouldn't right. have put you on the spot. I've been no, doing that all good. day. It's mostly me yelling. It's just mostly me yelling. So <laughs> I watched. I watched the first couple episodes um, of Justice League. Just rewatched them, and I'm like, sure. "Wow, poor George did a lot of grunting in these." I did a lot of screaming and grunting, and electric <laughs> being electrocuted. <sighs> all of that. They just did. They just like torture you. They did. <laughs> I didn't enjoy that. That was the, my least favorite part of it. <laughs> oh, All right. Well, well um, good to meet I, you guys, and uh, we'll see you again soon. Good to meet you, George. Hopefully Thank you. In person. Okay. Have yes. a great night. Thank you. you, you Thank you. Bye. 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 All right.